I would have recorded the whole lesson and not done it. Thank you. Okay, so looking at 2x squared minus 10x plus 4. I tried to see if this was factorable because I'm like, I'd rather solve by factoring if, if possible. So I said, well, multiply it to be a times c and adds up to be b. That was our first step. So we know a is 2, b is negative 10, and c is 4. So a times c is 8. And then what multiplies to be 8 and adds up to be negative 10. This was the process we took in factoring. Well, none, look at this. None of our factors could possibly add up to be negative 10. So looking at 1 and 8 could never add up to be negative 10. 2 and 4 could never add up to be negative 10. So we have no factors. That doesn't mean that there's not an answer. Look, I just graphed this on my calculator. And I see those solutions. I know they're there. I just don't know what they are. I can't find them by factory. But these quadratics still have solutions. Now, also, guys, this is really quite interesting. This quadratic might be up here, and it might not even cross the x-axis. That also does not mean no solution. There's still two solutions. They're just going to be imaginary solutions. So if they don't cross the x-axis, a quadratic, it still has two solutions. So it'll just be imaginary solutions, okay? So now I'm going to go through and... Um, tell you how to do the quadratic formula because guess what? If we can't solve by factoring, we can solve a quadratic by the quadratic formula. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Cool thing about the quadratic formula, guys. Let's say that your your favorite choice is not factoring. Let's say your favorite choice is not factoring. You can always, always, always use the quadratic formula. It works to solve a quadratic no matter what. So it's kind of cool. So a lot of people choose to use the quadratic formula every single time, but if you're not good at simplifying roots, underneath roots, which is what we did yesterday, and if you are prone to making small errors, the quadratic formula can be really tricky. So that's why I always suggest factoring over the quadratic formula if possible. There's a lot less errors. Anyways, and you'll get better at factoring and you'll get quicker at it. Anyways, but let's say it's not factorable, you'll use the quadratic formula. So once again, quadratics have the form ax squared plus bx plus c. We've got to make sure before we use the quadratic formula that it's set equal to zero and it's in standard form. Then we'll go through and figure out what a, b, and c is. Well, we know those are just the numbers, the coefficients in front of our terms. And then you'll use the quadratic formula, which is this. So I'm sure you've all heard the song. I'll go ahead and sing it. Um, this is, well, I'll just say it first, then I'll sing the song. So this is x is equal to negative b, the opposite of b. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, in parentheses, of b squared minus 4 times a times c, and that's all over 2 times a. So how many of you have heard the x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, let's all sing it because that will help you remember it forever. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root. I'll make you sing a solo if you don't sing with us. All okay. over 2a. Okay, so um, once again, quadratic formula will always work for solving a quadratic. So it's kind of cool because I have some people get really good at the quadratic formula. They don't make any errors and they use that every time to solve a quadratic. I don't care how you solve a quadratic. You choose. So if you choose this method, that's fine. Just don't make any errors. Okay. So once again, caution. Before you can just go through and start using the quadratic formula, it is essential that you make sure it's in standard form and set equal to zero. So important. I have these four unfortunate souls that go through and do the whole quadratic form formula, simplify it all down, and then I, they say, check my answer, and as I look, they didn't have it in standard form, so they have everything wrong. Oh my heck, you are like an angel sent from heaven. Thanks. I, wow, thanks. I've been waiting for these. Okay. Whew. You guys don't know the pain and suffering that I've been caused from using this. Okay. Anyways, continuing on, here we go. Jeez, you guys are a tough crowd. I, my secondary two kids think I'm hilarious. They like laugh their heads off at me. And you guys are just like crickets, crickets. And I'm like, oh, right, moving on. Anyway, okay. So let's go through this one. Here we go. Um, looking at this one, we have 8n squared is equal to negative 4 minus 8n. So I'm choosing to not even see if it factors. I'm just going to use the quadratic formula. That's what we're practicing today. Before I can go through and use the quadratic formula, I have to make sure this is set equal to zero. Correct? <coughs> So can we just float these things? So important, guys. Can we just float this stuff over here? No. You've got to use the correct operations to get from one side of the equation to the other. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 8n. Uh, I'll just use my other pen for right now because I don't want to recalibrate. So we'll add 8n to both sides. Quickly recalibrate, hopefully. Maybe not. Seriously? Sorry. There we go. Okay. Add it in to both sides. Add it in to both sides. Now, also, in the same step, I'm going to add 4. Why am I adding? Because this was subtract 4. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Now, look over here on the left. Let's write this in standard form. You can't combine those things. They're not like terms. 8n squared plus 8n. I'm writing it in standard form. Very important. Plus 4, which is equal to, well, now, what's it equal to? What does all that stuff on the right add up to be? Zero. Okay, does everybody see though that I had to do inverses to get it from one side of the equation to the other? Okay, awesome. So then from here, guys, then from here, we know a is equal to 8, b is equal to 8, and c is equal to 4. If you mix up a, b, and c, you're going to get it wrong. Get it in standard form so your a, b, and c's are correct in positive form. Okay, let's go ahead and plug it into the quadratic formula. I'm going to show all my work for this one because there's a lot and a lot of errors in it, really. It's so painful. Trust me, I know the pain of going through this whole thing. It's super long and then getting it wrong because I made a little error. So x equals negative e plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. I'll put that in parentheses. All over 2a. Okay, let's go ahead and plug these things in. So we have x is equal to the opposite of b. The opposite of b. Negative b means the opposite of b. What is the opposite of b? Negative 8 plus and minus the square root of b squared. This is so important. I promise. I have every year I have like 10 kids that they don't think parentheses are important. They don't put them and they get them wrong. So just do it. Um, because when we have negatives, it changes things. So we have b squared, 8 squared minus 4 times a, a is 8 times by c, c is 4. Any questions on where I'm plugging these things in from? And that's all over 2 times a. 2 times what? 8. Okay, now piece by piece, I'm going to simplify this. So this is really equal to negative 8 plus and minus the square root of what is 8 squared? I'm going to show my work, and honestly, guys, if you show your work, I can tell you where you made an error way quicker. Like, I can't tell you. If you have it wrong and you don't have work, I can't say you accidentally did this, and it's a quick fix usually like that. If you just do the answer, I say, I'm sorry, just redo it, because I, I don't know where to help you. So show your work. 64. And then right here, this is where most people make mistakes, but guys, we're going to be careful. In your calculator, I would multiply all those things together. I would make sure I write negative 4. Have your graph and calculator. Here you go. Type in your calculator for me. Negative 4 times 8 times 4. Negative 4 times 8 times 4. Tell me what you get. Negative 128. Thank you. Negative 128. Very good. And that's all over 8 times 2, which is 16. Questions up to there. Showing all my work so I don't make any errors. I really have negative 8 plus and minus the square root. Okay, guys, so tell me this. Sorry about that. Seriously? Okay, 64 minus 128. What is it? Negative. Okay, negative 64, and that's all over 16. Now, this is where you go off to the side. I'm going to do a little aside. I'm going to change color. We need to simplify the square root of negative 64. All right, so we learned this yesterday, the square root of negative 64. Well, remember, this is my off to the side for a second. Once I've combined everything in here, we're going to go off to the side and simplify. This is negative 1 times 64, right? What's the square root of negative 1? I, okay, good. So we pulled out an I, and then 64. The square root is 64. Well, let's break it down. If we needed to, 8 times what? 8 times 8, and then 8 breaks, uh, 8 times 8, yeah. And then 8 breaks down into 4 and 2, if we had to do this. And then 8 breaks down into 4 and 2, and then 4 breaks down into 2 and 2. 4 breaks down into 2 and 2, correct? 
Okay. With this one, there happened to be an easier way, but I'm doing it this way because there's going to be ones where you have to do this. And I'm just reminding us what we learned yesterday. Groups of two, right? And then I have those two twos. Do I have anything left underneath? Do I have anything left underneath? No, we pulled everything out. So we have a two on the outside times a two times a two. Two times two times two is? What's two times two, guys? Four. Four times two is? Eight. So this became 8i. Nothing was left under the house. Does everybody understand what I did there? Nothing's left under the house. So what this became was 8i. So I'm going to scroll down and give myself a little room. All right, so what we had here then was negative 8 plus and minus. This went away and became 8i. Not the square root of 8i. It, the square root went away. We have 8i all over 16. We could not have found this by factoring. We have an imaginary, two imaginary solutions because we have the i. Interesting. Now your final step is you'll look and say, can I simplify this? Can I simplify this further? Now to be able to simplify, this is so important. I have to be able to divide by one, two, three. All three have to be able to divide or you have to leave it alone. Even if these two simplify, if all three don't simplify, you can't do anything, okay? So 8, 8, and 16, do they all divide by something? All divide by, they all divide by 8. So this divides by 8 and becomes a 1. This divides by 8 and becomes a 1. This divides by 8 becomes a 2. So now I'm just going to rewrite that a little bit prettier here. So what we really have then is negative 1 plus and minus. 1 times i is just i, right? Is everybody following me? And that's all over 2. So x is equal to negative 1 plus and minus i over 2. I need you to understand something. On an ACT, on the end of levels, on our test that's coming up, I will not write the answer like that. They won't on an ACT either. That's why I'm trying to prepare you. They'll split it up. They want to know if you know that that's really two answers. So both of our answers will be written like this. x is equal to negative 1 plus i over 2 and plus i over 2 and x is equal to negative 1 minus i over 2. Those are our two answers, plus and minus i. Does everybody understand that that's what that really means? We have two imaginary solutions. So if we were to graph this one day, we would not see a cross in the x-axis. So this would really truly be the only way to solve this one, the quadratic formula. Okay? Okay. Questions. Do you see how there's so much to with these? You might want to do them on your own paper instead of on the worksheet because it gets squishy. I was trying to do it. And guys, it you just gotta be careful. You've gotta be careful. Okay, let's do another one. If you didn't know, I that's one. If you have been paying attention, you don't even have to do that one on the worksheet because I just did it for you. So hopefully you did it with me. And then you'll have that one done. Okay, I'm gonna do problem number seven on the worksheet. So notice I'm not being mean, I'm actually helping you. I'm doing problems on the worksheet with you. So looking at this one, we, I'm going to go through and do the quadratic formula on this one, but can anyone see an easier way? Yeah. What would you do? Yeah, tell me what you'd do. Just like, oh, I thought you raised your hand. Okay. Can anyone see an easier way? Okay, so you're saying it's missing the, the x, right? Good. You're good. Yeah, that's true. So we're missing the dx. So there's a quick way of doing this one. So I heard her say, we've got to isolate b squared, right? So divide both sides by 4. Divide both sides by 4. So that would be b squared is equal to what's 4 divided by 4? 1. OK. All right. All right. So then what will we do? Square root both sides. The square root of both sides. That way, our root cancels out with our power. So we get b is equal to the square root of 1. What is the square root of 1? It is? Nope. Square root of 1, guys. No, it's not i. Square root of 1. What, what makes an i? A negative 1, right? Under the square root. This is positive 1. Square root of 1 is just 1. Very good. So do we have just one answer? No, it's what? We forgot to write the plus and minus. Plus and minus 1. So b is equal to positive 1, and b is equal to negative 1. So... <clears throat> I won't go through the quadratic formula on that one. If you can see an easier way to do it than the quadratic formula, by all means. By all means. That was way easier than the quadratic formula, right? Okay. So notice in this one we were missing the x. 
So I would suggest just doing it this way. Okay, let's do another one. Questions on that one? Okay, this one, we have x, 10x squared minus 13 is equal to zero. Once again, what do you notice about this one? I have it written right there on the board. Continue guys, we've got to keep going. So 10x squared minus 13 is equal to zero. What are we missing? It says it on the board. A bx, so should we go through the whole quadratic formula? Eh, nah, I'm not gonna choose to. If you choose to, by all means, go right ahead. You'll get the same answer that we're gonna get, but we're gonna get there way quicker, and that's fine. It's, there are right ways and there are long ways. Whichever one you choose is your choice. Okay, so what do we have to do before, what do we have to do? Good, isolate x squared. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add 13 to both sides. So in this one, I have 10 x squared is equal to positive 13, correct? Those add up to be zero. Is that true? Are you following me, people? Okay. Now what do I need to do before I take the square root? Good. Divide both sides by 10. I'm doing this one for a reason, guys, so stay with me. So then that leaves me with x squared is equal to 13 over 10. True? True. Okay, good. Okay, now what we do? Square root both sides. We've isolated x squared. We take the square root of both sides. So the nice thing is, our root can't solve our power. So we have x is equal to the square root of 13 over 10. Now if you stop here, I will mark your answer wrong on the text, because you will never see an answer written like that. Now I'll explain why. We talked about this briefly yesterday. So from here, guys, what you need to understand is since this is all square rooted, all this stuff, this is the same thing. So we can rewrite this as x is equal to the square root of 13 over the square root of 10. Does everybody see how before it was the square root of 13 over 10, and now it's still the square root of 13 is still all over the square root of 10? Does everybody see how it's the same? Now we learned this yesterday. Would it be the most simplified answer if you had a root in the denominator of a fraction? We learned this yesterday. Would it be the most simplified if you had a root in the denominator? Bottom. No, we've got to fix it. So we learned yesterday how to rationalize the denominator. I promise on the ACT you guys, you won't see the answer written like this. Okay, so let's rationalize the denominator. We need to get rid of the root in the bottom. The root on top is totally fine, but on bottom it's not. So we've got to simplify this. So let's multiply the bottom by the square root of 10. But if you do that to the bottom, you've got to do it to the top. Now, once again, the reason we can do this, guys, is because if you look at that, the square root of 10 over the square root of 10 is just a fancy 1. We're multiplying this by essentially a fancy 1. And that's okay. You can multiply anything by 1, and it's still the same thing. Okay, so on top, now we have x is equal to, we have the square root of 13 times by the square root of 10. Since they're both square roots, we can multiply what's underneath here. So we'll have the square root of 113 times 10. 130, very good. And then on the bottom, guys, now why did we do this? Now let's look over here, back here. What we essentially have is the square root of 10 times 10, which is the square root of 10 squared, true? 10 times 10 is 10 squared. So then on the bottom, our root canceled our power, so what was really left on the bottom now? 10, did we fix it? Did we fix it? No roots on bottoms, we're all good. Now we would have done the quadratic formula. We would have had zero, Plus and minus, and we forgot our what? What did we forget when we took the square root of both sides? Plus and minus, right? Okay. We have to throw a plus and minus in front of that. Um, so if we did the quadratic formula, what we would have got was this. Zero plus and minus the square root of 130 all over 10. Does everybody see how this, zero plus that, is just going to be that? Zero minus that is just going to be that. So does everybody see how these are the same answers? You would have got this. You wouldn't have seen the answer written like this. Do you know zero plus that is just that? Zero minus that is just that. So different ways of getting there, same answer. Now what we would make sure we would do, guys, is go off to the side and make sure that the square root of 130 doesn't break down into a factor tree and simplify any further. But if you think about it, to get to 130, we had factors 13 and 10, right? Everybody stay with me so that you can see this quickly. We have factors 13 and 10. So those are factors of 130, right? Does 13 break down any further? 
the 10 breaks down into five and two. Did we have two of anything? No. So this would be our answer. We can't pull anything else up. Okay. Questions on that? All right. We're going to do one more with the quadratic formula, and then I think you should be good. I think you should be good to work. Okay. 7x squared minus 8x minus 12 is equal to 0. Once again, 7x squared minus 8x minus 12 is equal to 0. So I am choosing, I'm going to just look at this and say, okay, I'm not going to even choose to try to factor this. I'm just going to go ahead and use the quadratic formula. So we know that this is already in standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, so I can go ahead and start. So a is equal to 7, b is equal to negative 8, and c is equal to negative 12. Is everybody okay with that? Then we do our little song. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I know you guys thought you would just have a Taylor Swift concert, but I'm sorry to break it to you. I'm just just pushing it. All right. Okay, let's go ahead and start plugging this in. Let's go ahead and start plugging this in. The opposite of b, that's the most sense, best way of looking at this. Opposite of b, what's the opposite of negative 8? Positive 8. We have x is equal to positive 8 plus and minus the square root of, I'm going to extend this down because I can't bend over like that forever. It's plugging me. I yeah, yeah, though. There we go. Okay, so then b squared. Does everybody, what is b? Negative 8 squared. Minus 4 times a. What's a? Times c. Are you guys? Oh, wow. I'm just praying that we don't make the errors that most people make. What is c? Negative 12. Does everybody see that I use parentheses and it really will help me not make any errors? And then that's all over 2 times a. a is 7. So let's keep simplifying this even further. So we have x is equal to 8. Something interesting is going to happen with this one. I can just fill it in my bones. There we go. So 8 plus and minus. What's negative 8 squared? I'm glad you said positive 64, Jesse. You're right. So we have positive 64. Now this next part is where the, the most errors come in. In your calculators, type it in like this so you don't make errors. Negative, pay attention to what I'm saying. Negative 4 times 7 times negative 12. Type that in and tell me what you get. Well, did you get positive? Positive what? 300. I can't hear you. Thank you for speaking clearly. 336. So plus, that was positive, 336. Awesome. True. And then that's all over 2 times 7 is 14. You guys are awesome. Okay. Now somebody, let's keep going with this. So what we really have is x is equal to 8 plus and minus the square root of 336 plus 64. Somebody do that for me real quick. 64 plus 336. Okay, 400. Very good. And that's all over 14. Now, I always like to first check and see if it's a perfect root. If not, though, we have to go to the, if we get a decimal, we have to break it down nicely, right, everybody? Okay, so see if the square root of 400 is a perfect root, meaning a whole number. It's 20? Okay. So we have x is equal to 8. Plus and minus the square root of 400, guys, is equal to 20. So it's not the square root of 20, it's 20. The square root of 400 is equal to 20. So what we have is this. 8 plus and minus 20, all over 14. So guys, what we essentially have here, this is important and interesting. X is equal to 8 plus 20 over 14. We also have X is equal to 8 minus 20 over 14. True. Blink it up. That's not, we're not done. We're not done here. Can we actually eight, add 8 to 20 up here? So we'll have x is equal to 28 over 14. Can we simplify that? Let's say you didn't know. Get your calculators to 28 divided by 14. Hit enter. Very good. Two. So it's 2. So x is equal to 2. Wow, that was a lot of work for a little answer. A nice, pretty answer. All right, so x is equal to 2. And then tell me, what is 8 minus 20, though? Let's simplify this one, too. 
8 minus 20, someone. Is it negative 12? Yes. So we have negative 12 over 14. Now, is that the most simplified fraction? No, but let's say you didn't want to do it. Let's say you didn't want to think about it. Type in your calculator for me so we can learn how to use these things. Negative 12 divided by 14. Hit enter. You get a decimal. You get a decimal. Change it back to a fraction. So you'll hit the math key. Do I need to show you up here? Math. Hit the math key. Hit enter, enter. And what do you get? Negative 6 sevenths. It simplified it for you. Negative 6 sevenths. So we have the answer 2 and negative 6 sevenths. If you need help with your calculator on something like that, I'm going to be walking around. Just ask me, how did you do that with your calculator? And I'd be willing to help you, okay? Okay, do you guys feel okay? This isn't new. You have seen this last year. Okay, so um, if you need help, just go through it slowly. Don't make errors. I'll be coming around. So do the whole worksheet, and it's due on 8 8. I would suggest, I personally have to show all my work. I need a lot of paper, because that, that's not very much room. So.